Hi, Art Seekers. We're here with Eliseo Silva, and we're in front of his iconic mural in um, in the Unidad Park. Thank you so much for coming to talk with us today. Well, I'm glad I made it here, you know. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, thank you. So, what made you start to see the street as your campus? It started... Uh, street, okay, this is my first street art, that, that is not the street art, but it's, it's when I uh, uh, worked at Social and Public Art Resource Center as an intern, and I never really thought about doing murals in that kind of folk, with that kind of focus, until I saw a career actually be possible after seeing Judy Baca and then her work with mur uh, murals in, uh, in uh, LA. I worked with her on two other murals, before I saw the Great Wall, which I worked on too, and which was my first tag. <laughs> I mean, I just came from the Philippines because before I went to a uh, grad, you know, like uh, undergrad program, I finished high school in the Philippines, and then um, I was 17, and then we moved here um, after this month, I got a visa. And then uh, when I got to Otis, I got a get internship, and then you know, Spark uh, opened up all these murals. Although I've been doing murals in the Philippines, but not this, the idea of street protests. You know, and I thought that that's what made it exciting uh, to be able to. Well, it actually it gave me an answer to my question because when I went to art school, uh, I was in a bottleneck because I went to a school where I, I'm like overflowing with Filipino ideas. <laughs> You know, because I went to a high school for the arts in the Philippines, which is actually a project of Ferdinand Marcos. So it kind of had this agenda, you know, of propagating nationalism. And, you know, he's a fascist, right? So he's like propagating all this stuff. But, you know, I, I'm not a fascist. I'm just trying to, uh, you know, we, we all of our artists need to have a, some kind of identity so that we could represent our culture when we're part of biennials or of you know, that kind of stuff. So out of your LA murals, which one do you think is the most political? The most political? Uh, this one, because it's out, outdoors, and it actually transformed the area politically. I mean, not in terms of like, you know, like straightforward politics, but it, it made the area become Filipino town. <laughs> You know, because the problem at, uh, for a long time was that they look at the area and there's a lot of historical landmarks. The oldest, all the churches that that uh, mean something to Filipinos are here, and the old, all the oldest are here. You know, the oldest Catholic, oldest Christian, oldest Filipino religion church is called the Deshne Cristo, the Crisis Filipino. Uh, it's right there. It's a four million dollar building. They're all here, but no one knows anything. Especially says Philippines, except for this mural. So the mural kind of like helped with that designation because it makes a visible statement. Of course, it's something that you can take a photo of yeah. and instantly recognize. Yeah. And understand. So politically, it did that. Um, other than that, of course, the Jewish mural down in uh, in the uh, Pico Robertson area, and then uh, the most political, really, for me. It's not outdoors. It's called Manifest Diversity, and it's inside a school in Carson, Casa Dominguez Hills, and it's the American version of this mural. And uh, we based it from Howard Zinn's book, People's History of the United States. So it's like a smorgasbord of like, all the political Characters. suppressed yeah. histories, you know, from uh, uh, Sojourner to. Uh, Malcolm X, uh, you know, uh, Harvey Milk. So final question, what neighborhood in LA would you love to get your hands on? Oh, what neighborhood in LA? Uh, every, this is the only, any neighborhood, every, <laughs> there's so many neighborhoods. Come to Brentwood, that's where I live, we need <laughs> some murals. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, because uh, I've spent uh, most of my time recently in East Coast because murals in LA was banned for it. Uh, almost a decade. That's when I left around 2002. Between 2002 and last year, murals were banned. So most of my time was spent doing murals. I came up with 50 murals in, in the East Coast. You know, so now I'm back here. I'm part of the uh, 
artist registry for DCA. I think out of like 300 artists that submitted, there's only 20 of us that was selected. So who knows where they're gonna put me or if I can get into one of those projects. But they, you know, they, uh, you know, they, they come up with, with projects and whatnot for the area. So. That's great. Welcome yeah. back. Thank you. And thank you so much. <laughs> All right. That was fast. <laughs> All right. Okay.